What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. Happy Sunday. Um, hope you got some stuff done this week. Um, today, uh, I had to mow the lawn and do, I just got a new driveway uh, put in, so I had to do some backfilling on the side just because it was asphalt and they slanted the sides a little bit for the water runoff. Um, so I had to get topsoil and then just like lay it out so it's flat and even. Um, which I'm not gonna lie, it didn't take that long, but since it's so hot out, it was just terrible. I, I literally was sitting and listening to music, and I'm like, come on, dude, I'm like trying to rush through it, but whatever. Um, I'm glad it's done now. So, uh, the video today, I had a few people um, in my uh, DMs, in my email as well, um, asking about house hacking, and some of them asked if I was house hacking this house, uh, which I'm not. Um, I'm pretty sure I went over that in the house tour video, but maybe they didn't see that part or something, so I'm going to go over it again. So, to get started, house hacking is when you buy a house, or you buy a single family house, duplex, triplex, fourplex, um, maybe you buy an apartment building, um, mobile home, tiny home, pretty much any type of home that you can buy. Uh, you can house hack if you have enough space for it. So ideally, you like for a single family, it'd be better to have at least like maybe three bedrooms. Um, so you live in one, you have two buddies living in the other two rooms, or maybe you have one buddy and then just some guy you find on like Airbnb, um, which you could do that as well. Um, or you could just do like, pretty much you could do with family or anyone that wants to rent a room from you. So I'm doing that, uh, I have, my room and then my buddy has his room um i'm not specifically house hacking this one just because it's kind of small um and so the the payment would be like outrageous for me to charge him that full amount plus utilities um plus wi-fi and all the stuff you have to pay along with it so we just pay 50 50. that's what i'm doing um i'm planning on living here just for a little bit over a year and then I'll probably just rent it out. Um, I might sell it, it just depends um, how the market is and what I'm feeling at that point. Um, and then also, if I can find another home, because with the way the market is now, it's gonna be kind of difficult uh, to find a home without selling my current one. Um, so yeah, so house hacking is literally just getting a house, you live in one room, you're uh, pretty much living for free if they're covering the cost of the house, that's rent, utilities, um, like Wi-Fi and any other thing that you want to do. Um, so there's a lot of ways to do it. Um, I would suggest starting with, I, I guess the best way to, to house hack is with a, um, a duplex or a triplex or a fourplex. So you live in one side, rent out the other side to pretty much, it could be your friends, like maybe a friend and his girlfriend, friend and his wife. Um, maybe you just live in this side with your wife, your girlfriend or your friend and then you run out this other side to pretty much anyone else. Like you can put it on Zillow, uh, Redfin, any of those listing websites, you can put it on and see uh, if you get any bites from that and have them move in and then they're gonna be paying you rent. And you should price it, you have to know like when you're looking for houses or uh, duplexes or anything you're looking for, you wanna make sure that you know the area and you like you wanna know how much you can charge for rent because you don't wanna go in there and then think, you're, think in your head just from like brainstorming that you have a certain number that you want to hit and then you get in there and like no one wants to pay that maybe because of the area, maybe because of the house, um, maybe it's not up to date, uh, things like that. So um, that's like, that's the first way you could house hack with the triplex, um, a duplex or a fourplex or you could just have a single family home. Probably better if you have more than two rooms just because if you live in one room and you have two buddies in the other room or two friends in the other room, other two rooms, um, then it's gonna be way easier to make more money per room than just having one room. Because the way I have it, I have two rooms. I'm paying my half and he's paying his half. If I had a third room, I would pretty much be living for free, but I couldn't find any house or anything that was three bedrooms that I wanted in a good area um, that actually like the price justified the house. Um, so that's the first way. The second way that you could house hack, well it's not really house hacking, but you could also like buy a fixer upper, live in it, and then literally live and flip is what it's called, live and flip. So you live in it and you do work while you're living there. So that's what the last owner of this house did. He was living here and he put the countertops, the floor, and all the stuff in. You can watch my house tour video if you want to know more information about it. Um, but he was living here and he was doing work throughout the house while he was living here. I think it was like two years or something. 
Um, so that's another way you could do it. Uh, that's more just pretty much instead of having like all the money up front to buy it and flip it and then just sell it, you could live there for a year. Um, you're adding value to the home and then you're going to be building equity at the same time. So when you sell and you get it reappraised, it's probably the value will definitely be more than what you purchased it for. So any time um, the difference in between what you purchased it for and what is the new appraisal value is, is what you make. Um, so that's a good way to do it. Um, so those are the, the two ways that I know. I'm sure there are other ways, but it's not really considered house hacking. It's more just real estate investing in general. Um, so the, the second or the third thing I want to talk about is I have had like my personal friends, some of them asking me um, about like getting into a house and stuff. And I want to make this very clear that if you buy one house, say you buy one house or one duplex or one triplex or anything else, an RV maybe, you're not going to become a millionaire off of one house. Like these people that are real estate investing, they have a whole portfolio of multiple homes, multiple um, apartment buildings, multiple units, whatever. So like, don't come in here thinking that you're going to be like making a whole bunch of money off of one house. It's like, that is not what this is. It takes a lot of money and a lot of time to build equity, um, to fix up the home, to be able to sell it. If you have if, FHA loan, you get to live in the home for at least a year. So FHA loan, um, you can get into a home for three and a half percent down instead of the traditional like 20, 25 percent. Um, if you don't have the money up front, then I would recommend that. If you do have the money up front, then I would just pay the 20, 25 percent. Um, but that's only the down payment. On top of the down payment, you still have closing costs that you have to pay on top of that. That's probably going to be like a few grand more, um, maybe five grand more. Um, so I, I just think a lot of people are getting confused about like real estate investing in general. Um, having one house is not going to make you rich. Like I'm sorry to say it, but that is just not going to. Um, so you have to do it. You have to either flip multiple homes, or you have to have multiple homes that you're renting out in your portfolio before you even make money. And even if you have four houses, the first like couple of years, you're not going to be making that much money because you still have to set aside all, even if you're getting like $2,000 a month for one home, you still have to set aside a portion for taxes and like a whole bunch of other stuff that you have to pay for. It's not like, oh, you just come in here, live in it for a year, rent it out, and then you profit all the money. Like there's still things you have to pay for. Uh, so I, I just think a lot of people are getting confused of, um, how to go about it, I guess. Uh, so if you do have any more questions, um, please feel free to reach out and I can discuss it with you. Um, so yeah, that, that's number one on house hacking. Um, and number, number two, I would say is just like buying a house and just straight up flipping it. You can either buy a fixer upper, flip it and sell it, or you can buy it up, fix it and then rent it. Um, I would definitely suggest running it because that's going to cash flow. Um, cash flow is king. Um, so really the thing that people are getting confused is the cash flow. You have to set aside the money, you have to do the research on the area you live in, what is a justifiable price to rent a room out or rent the whole house out for because if I had this house, I can't rent this house out for $5,000 even if I wanted to. No one's going to pay that. Even if it was like four bedrooms, I guarantee you no one would pay that money for where this house is at, the size of it, and like stuff like that. So you have to take into account everything that goes on around the house. Like if you have a busy road, that's going to take the price down. If you have loud neighbors that are trashy, that's going to take the price down. If you have a whole ass construction site behind you, it's going to take the price down. Like these are things that you have to consider. You can't just go buy a house and then just start renting it out and then think like, oh, I'm going to be a millionaire in one year. Like, that's not how it works. Like, it takes time to build equity. Um, it takes time to fix stuff and it takes money. Everyone just thinks like, oh, I buy a house and I can sell it and I'm making bands. Like, that's not like that. You can do, like, you could make a decent amount of money, but it's not, it's not going to make you rich because there's still other things you have to pay for. Um, so I just wanted to make that clear uh, for everyone. So if you do have any other questions, uh, feel free to reach out and be sure to definitely watch my house tour video. Uh, if you don't want to watch a tour, then just skip. I, it should be like the last like 15, 20 minutes of the video. Uh, I went over um, how I got into the house and everything like that. So that should help you guys out a decent amount. 
And if that doesn't help you out, please reach out to me. Like, I, I literally, I like helping you guys, and I will. So if you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out to me for answers. Okay? Cool. So, sorry about that. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is improvements. So, at least for me, from what I know, like even this home, even though I bought it, it's remodeled on the inside, there's still always going to be something that you can do to add value to a home. So, whether that's improving the outdoor living space, um, improving the efficiency of the home, so that means like water heaters, um, like the the furnace and stuff like that. If that like there are more efficient, um, energy efficient what, uh, models that you can pick uh, to make the home more efficient. Insulation is another one. Um, so there's always something that you can do to the home, even if it's remodeled. There's still always something that you can do to improve the value. Just like me, like this house is improved, but I just spent money on a new driveway, and that's going to improve the value. Um, I'm planning on doing some stuff like landscaping. Curb appeal is definitely a big one. So whether that's repainting the outside of the home, adding new siding, um, adding like the up above the roof, like the wood fit, the teak wood or whatever, adding new windows, adding new lights. So there's, there's multiple ways that you can add value even if you find a home that's already been remodeled. There's multiple different ways um, that you that you can choose to like avenues I guess to choose that you can to, to make more money um, so I just want to make that clear that even if you find a home that's updated don't just skip over it because there's always something that you can do to a home even if the whole outside is redone there's always something new that you can improve to make the home worth more money um, so yeah I just want to make that clear uh, that there's always something to do and I would say that the big ones are home efficiency um, kitchen remodels, bathroom remodels, um, windows, lighting, outdoor living, um, flooring, definitely that goes for, for, for the whole entire house. Um, and just looking over there too, there's another thing, the carpet. This car, the guy that lived here last, he redid a lot of the stuff on the inside, pretty much everything, besides the carpet. So before I move, I could redo the carpet and it's not going to add that much value, but it's going to make it look nicer and it's going to make it feel better. So the carpet is definitely something you can redo. Um, maybe painting a few walls to make it like feel bigger is something you could do. Redoing the ceiling is something you could do. Redoing your basement is something you can do because this, this basement in this house isn't finished. If you haven't seen the other video, like I said earlier, the home tour video, the basement's not finished. So I could redo the, the basement, but for at least for this home, it doesn't make too much sense just because it's not that big of a space, so there's not really much to do down there. Um, and even with the space I have, if I were to block it off, make a closet for the washer and dryer in the utility appliances, it, it would just take away from the space. So I'm probably just not even going to mess with that. Uh, but the driveway definitely is going to add value. Um, the landscaping is going to make it have better curb appeal. The outside living space will definitely um, make it feel nicer for some people and will like make them want to like imagine themselves living here. So I'm glad that I got this house. Uh, the backyard was pretty bare. The, the only thing back there is that the uh, last thing we did was a fence and the patio. So I could put a pergola up with some lights on it, maybe put some ivy down on the on the walls and on the ceiling of it, on the pergola. Um, stuff like that. Like There's always something that you can do to improve the value, whether it's redoing the inside or redoing the outside like there's always going to be something that you can do so i just want to make that clear don't just skip over a home because you see it's it's redone um you can always do something even changing like the the knobs on the on the cabinets it's not going to add value but it's going to make it feel nicer and maybe someone's going to be like oh that looks nice i don't have to do that so uh, maybe like you know what i mean it's just like certain things that people might want that they didn't think they wanted until they actually show up to the house um, the other thing I just thought about too is the backsplash. There's no backsplash anywhere in this kitchen. So before I, before I move out of here, I'm probably going to add a backsplash. Um, probably just on this wall back here. You can watch, I'm not going to show it, but you can watch the video uh, of the house tour and you can see that there's no backsplash. So I might add a backsplash. Um, maybe I could add some speakers or something. I don't know. But there's always something you can do. Like, Look online. If you, like, don't just watch my videos and think like, oh, this is what I'm going to do. 
Like you have to be able to watch multiple videos, read multiple blogs, read multiple, um, like go through forums and uh, networking groups. Cause like for me at least, I've been I've been involved in real estate for the past like four years. Like it, it it might not have been selling houses or anything like that, but I've been learning and I've been wrapping my mind around everything that goes into it for the past four years. So I think I have a pretty good idea of of uh, what goes on. And I also talk to a lot of investors and I talk to a lot of real estate agents. Like I know a lot of luxury, I guess you could say, real estate agents in this area. And the other thing is my dad. My dad is a broker, he owns his own brokerage. He only really sells to like first time home buyers. And even though everyone's dream is, oh, I'm gonna sell like million dollar houses, million dollar listing or whatever. Yeah, you could do that, but like for the majority of people that live in a city, like even though it might be a major city, there there's not going to be like LA or New York or Miami or like Toronto or something like that or London even where there's like a house or a townhouse that's like 60 million dollars, 20 million dollars, 40 million dollars, thing like like those prices are only in certain areas. So like if you're an agent in Indiana, a lot of Asians do make good money, but at the same time, they're not selling like 55, $10 million houses in one year. Like my dad, he makes a good amount of money, but he only sells like houses that are fixer uppers or people that are first time home buyers. But at the same time, it takes longer to sell a million dollar house than it does to sell a hundred thousand dollar house. A million dollar house has a smaller uh, buyer pool than what a hundred thousand dollar market has. So. At the end of the day, you could sell one million dollar house and make a decent amount of money, or you could sell fifteen to thirty different small houses and make the same amount of money. So really, it just depends on what market you're in and what you specialize in, because there's multiple different types of agents. Like there's investors agents, there's buyers agents, there's sellers agents, there's some agents that only work in commercial, some agents that only work in um, investment properties, some agents that only work with buyers, some agents that only work with sellers. Like there's a lot of different ways that you can, can make money. Um, and not even being an agent. They're like an agent, for me at least, I always thought I wanted to be an agent. But at the end of the day, when I started actually learning about real estate and how everything works, being an agent is like, it could help to have a license, but at the end of the day, I don't want to really go sit out and do open houses and like, be a buyer's agent and go to 50 different houses that they don't want and just waste all that time when I could be spending that time driving around or talking to other people that have investment opportunities that I could pull my money into or I could just straight up buy it, things like that. Like Being an agent is definitely a good way to get started but at the end of the day, that's not really the best option for most people and at least for me unless you have, you have had your eyes set on it for a long time. Because being an agent is not really investing. Being an agent is like a career. So if you want to start investing, then I would definitely say start building a portfolio and slow, you have to slowly do it because if you rush it, it's going to be gone. The money and everything is going to be gone just as fast as you got it. That's the only thing I have to say. So I would just say, make sure you do research on what you actually want to do. If you want to be an agent, go ahead and do it. If you want to be a wholesaler, go ahead and do it. If you want to be just a bird dog and make side cash, go ahead and do it. Like being making a lot of money in, in real estate is it's not hard, but it's also not simple. There's a lot of things to go into it, and it takes a lot of money to be able to make money, at least specifically in real estate. Um, so I just want to make that clear. Um, this is going to be the end of the video, so I hope that everyone has a good weekend. Go ahead and enjoy the football going on today. Go Colts. Um, even though we're probably not going to win against the Rams, but who cares? Um, so yeah, go ahead, uh, like like this video if it helps you out. Um, if you have any other questions revolving what I just talked about, house hacking or anything else, please feel free to reach out. Um, and also, go ahead and please join Connected Investors. I actually just had someone, they have a PIN software, P-I-N. Um, where you can get like vacant buyer list and all the list of home buyers with their address and their name and their number already on it. Um, it does cost money, but at the end of the day, it's probably worth it. So please go and watch my, uh, I think it was Driving for Dollars part two. Or no, 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 no. It was the whole, it was the wholesaling due diligence. Um, at the end of that video, I have a whole tutorial and like walkthrough of the Connected Investors website. 
Um, I'll probably make another one just because I know it's a big website. It's starting to gain momentum and a lot of people are starting to learn about it. Um, so yeah, go ahead and do that. Uh, feel free to reach out if you have any other questions. I hope everyone has a good week and a good Sunday.